Comedian Dave Juskow thinks it's no laughing matter that his friend has missed gigs, ruined his movie prop, and made him buy costumes and props the defendant never used. He is suing for $910. Defendant Mike Bocchetti says he has dealt with the plaintiff's shenanigans for too long and had valid reasons as to why he couldn't perform. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yay. I do. Thank you. All rise. The Honorable Judge Jerry Springer now presiding. Good oh, morning, yeah. Judge. Good morning. Case number 082 on the docket. Jeskow versus Bacchetti. Dave, you are suing your friend Mike basically because you say he cost you some money when you were putting together a show. Well, it's basically like this. Mike Machetti is an incompetent boob. I have been doing shows since the early 90s where I've put him in a forum that he could either be on some of my television shows I've done or movies I've created or live projects that I have done. And not only is his incompetence now uh, affected me financially, but I get no kind of value from using him in any kind of format. As they say in The Godfather, he makes me look ridiculous. And a man in my position cannot be made to look ridiculous. <laughs> oh. Your Honor, first of all, I don't know what transpired here. At one time, he was a dear friend and a nice man. He turned into a foe with me. And he's suing me? I don't know what you expected out of me, to share a TV dinner at my mom's house? You know I have nothing. Go ahead. So I made a movie called Turbo Charge, which is a documentary about the cars. You've uh, heard of the cars, the band, the cars? Yes. Yes, it's an unauthorized biography about the band, the cars. OK, so it looks like you have something in your hand. And later on, we'll green screen in Susan's body in place of it, OK? Terrific. Now, Phil, um, I want you to, uh... Phil? Hi, how are you? Good. Good, you enjoying yourself? Yeah, oh yeah. That's terrific, great. Listen, here's what I want you to do, Phil. Uh, Rick's going to say his line. Um, and you kept me going when the sun went down. There's going to be a beat, and then I want you to turn the lights on in the building, okay? Okay. Okay, so the sun went down, bam, and that's when the lights come on. Okay. You got that? Oh, yeah. You're with me? Yes. You know the, the song? No, I know the deal. Of course. Terrific. Terrific. Okay, here we go. All right, Rick, you ready? All right. Phil, is there a reason you're still standing there? Oh, sorry, sorry, Thank I'm sorry. Thank you very much, Phil. You call that a movie? Well, he's got me there. Sorry, Your Honor. It's on Amazon Prime. Okay. People don't like you, it very uh, much. And but you, that's not the point. No, I didn't think so. Right. Well, you know, with constant text, phone calls, when are you going to use me? When are you going to use me? We found a part for him. And once again, oh, come on. his incompetence and boobery and the fact that he can't maintain, memorize any kind of lines or stage direction cost our production money. So I paid for the movie myself. So everybody, the only thing they got was food which is why he, I believe, chose to come on. Oh, uh, you idiot. Let alone then, at the time, uh, when we were performing the thing, we, I rented the space. And because he couldn't remember his dialogue and he couldn't remember his scenes, we had to go over time and over budget, which cost me an extra five to $600 because I was renting the space. And we had to crank the AC because he, he can't stop sweating, which I'm pretty sure he's doing right now. And uh, so that, again, another cost. If you are always been so dissatisfied with his performance, why do you keep hiring him? Well, look at him. He's hilarious. I mean, that's the problem. He's just difficult to work with. But I mean, there is something to him where you just can't stop laughing now, and I'm mad at him. I just... <laughs> now, what about this? Oh, That no. is the Pilgrim costume I bought for him to, do, to be in a Thanksgiving sketch we were doing at the Comedy Cellar which is the greatest thing you can do for somebody. The Comedy Cellar is the end all for any comedian, Comedy Cellar in New York City. Well, that's yeah. And I do right shows there, and yeah. I was doing a Thanksgiving show, so I bought him that costume, and again, he bailed the day before, because this time his excuse was he had a heart attack. Oh, no. Whoa, 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 whoa. You had a heart attack? Yes, I did, Your okay, Honor. Okay, that is a valid excuse. Maybe. Now, what with him and his pattern? I didn't even believe him for a second. Your Honor, I take heart meds, not Flintstones vitamins like this idiot thinks. Okay, but you did have a heart Yes, I did. I have a stent right here. I'll take it out and show it to you if you no, need No, don't to. take it out, please. <laughs> You're doing better now? Yes. All right. But then the ultimate thing, and there's lots more, but I'll say the, the penultimate thing, was a cancer benefit for our mutual friend, Chris Murphy, to raise money for his hospital bills. And it was me and Colin Quinn and uh, lots of other really great comics. And Chris asked if Mike 
could come on and just basically just stand there because that makes everybody laugh. And he didn't show up. He canceled that no, the last no, no, minute no, no, no. because Your he Honor, said, I think he, he just, got a better a offer yeah. to possibly be in a prequel of The Sopranos. But that's the kind of person he is. He will leave at the drop of a, a better offer. Why didn't you show up for the cancer benefit? I am not in the best of health. I have heart disease for the past few years. I wasn't feeling good. I don't even know if I was going to make it here today. But I just wanted to man up and face up yeah, to well, this monster. Well, of course you're going to come if it's going to be on, on television. Right now. I mean, there's right. the bottom okay. line. Also, on his night of the so-called benefit, I also have chronic bronchitis. I kept telling him that. So you didn't show up because you have bronchitis? Yeah, or? I told him that too, Your Honor, because I kept, he kept calling me, cursing me out, yeah. and I told him, no, I'll, I can't do it, and he just wouldn't believe me. And we have a video of the man in question, Chris Murphy, who has something to say about it, because he was devastated. I think it's a frame-up with him. He, any okay, of this video, watch, you I can just want to watch this now. Okay. I was diagnosed with stage four cancer, and there was a benefit being done for me. The same night of my surgery, and a week prior, Dave Juskow, the angel Dave Juskow, scheduled for all of us to get together to do a sketch because Dave knew full well by showing it the night of my benefit, this indeed could be the last performance of my life. But Mike Buschetti bailed. He's the same lame excuse he always uses when he finds something better. And that better offer, by the way, was a day with a dominatrix. Your Honor, this has been... But it was and, a and day with the dominatrix. Now I remember, off. that's exactly no, what it was. That's it was a several lie. years ago. That thing is bogus. And that's why right. he bailed on it. Right. And I'm not suing for that, sir, by the way, sir. because... Okay. That's enough, sir. Okay. It's bogus. That's enough. The judge is speaking. All right, just to firm that up, you said you didn't show up at this cancer benefit. You're saying the reason you didn't show up is because... Because I had chronic bronchitis. Okay. Your Honor. He's lying. So... I still have it. You want, you want to check my medicine cabinet? He'd show up as long as there's a television <laughs> show or anything. I just to do. can't go on. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I have a wonderful witness who we both know mutually, Miss Rachel Feinstein, and she's an outstanding comic in the community. She'll let you know the shenanigans he pulls on people. Is she here? Yes. Yeah. What is this? Sorry. Hello. What, do I need to swear on a Bible? No, right Miss, here. Please oh. raise your right hand. Okay. Do you swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help me. To God. Well, that carries extra points. Thank you. So what can you add to this case? Well, Your Honor, first of all, I'm sorry that you've had to listen to any of it. We're all dumber for having been in this room. Dave <laughs> Juskow made what he called a movie, which was a mockumentary about the cars. No one asked for this film to be made. No one asked for this to be made. Nobody needed this movie. And if you even read one review under it, people were furious. Sure. It is so awful that I believe they believe. Objection. Go ahead. Double it's objection. I okay, believe if any of you in the courtroom watched this movie, it, you would you would have an instinct you let her get away with that? That's to ridiculous. harm yourself. That's how dumb and terrible it is. She's right. What is that Empire State Building <laughs> doing here? This is the Empire State Building. I paid all the I paid I paid all the money into this production. It's a, a feature length film, and uh, the, the people have spoken and they they love it. Or. You know, that's what one person said. So this is an Empire State Building. He <laughs> fell over it multiple times, which is now you can see it's taped together. I mean, I still have it, but this cost me money and time to put together. I had to actually pay somebody to put it together. You picked it up in the Salvation Army. F.A.O. Schwartz, David, which is David, I was supposed to be able money. to speak for a moment. Now, Dave Juskow, we've all tried to help him. You know, he wants to do stand-up. When he opens for me on the road, I beg him. I say, Juskow, please, please, when you go up for me tonight at Laugh Boston, don't do it any jokes about Aaron Brockovich or the movie Pretty in Pink, because no one remembers that. A lot of people in higher levels of intelligence like Pretty in Pink. It's a classic. Just scout. Shut up and let me finish. Objection? Fin so <laughs> Ma'am, speak, speak okay. to the Okay, you've got three objections, because I counted the double one, remember? Thank you. Yes. Okay, appreciate that. So, he did a five-minute chunk on Aaron Brockovich. Oh, that was Rachel, my new material. I stopped, that was from 2000. Gerard, Pretty and Pink is from the 80s. He does a okay. filthy X-rated version of Mr. McGill. Oh, yes. No one cares who that is either, apparently. So I also have a few uh, short stories to illustrate uh, his character that uh, are pretty upsetting. So if anybody has a weak stomach, I suggest you leave now. Dave Juskow uh, actually cheated on a friend of ours. Um, he was uh, sleeping with her when her boyfriend walked in, OK? Juskow, who'd recently gotten a nose job, which is pertinent to this story. I'm not trying to embarrass you. Your nose looks all right, you know, at this point. So 
her boyfriend walks in the room. Jessica was sleeping with his girlfriend, okay? Yeah. That in itself is devastating oh. enough, right? Rachel, how does this so, nightmare happen? Is there another word for <laughs> okay. objection so this, that I could use me, here? Excuse me, let me finish. Okay, so then, yeah. so this man walks in, lunges towards Jessica to hurt him. He picks up the girl to cover his nose job, uses her body as a human shield to cover his you freshly know nose job. nose knows. job can be, Your Honor. I could <laughs> not have a sacrifice it being broken again. <laughs> That's typical of him. How many women he slept with and screwed over is ridiculous. Wow. He told me and many others when we first started in this business that if they would just sit on his lap that he would put him in the pictures. First of all, who says the pictures <laughs> anymore? No one uses that phrase. <laughs> you were allowed to do that back then. That's how they taught us in the movies. <laughs> okay, could one of you talk about what the relevance of any of this has to do with oh, the relevance? I would like to hear from Rachel. Of course oh, you'd like so. to hear from Rachel. That's where this whole thing is going. She's a credible witness, Dave. Let her speak. You need to shut You've up for a minute. You've been speaking nonstop since you got here. I no, think I can say you, something, Your Honor, too. May I speak a second? Because she's a credible witness, a longtime friend. He's done more than enough to ruin her life and cost her work. He work. doesn't know what a credible witness is. You're what is this story about a bottle? Yes, OK, so I do shows at the Comedy Cellars, these readings of movies. Pictures. <laughs> Uh, yes, Your Honor, pictures. Yes, I do readings of these pictures at the uh, Comedy Cellar, which, of course, as I said, is the greatest comedy club in town. And one of the best. It's a place where everybody wants to be. So to put Mike Pichetti in a show like that, who's just constantly asking, can I be in one of your shows, is a really big deal. We have uh. all these. So we were doing Goodfellas, and we, Mike was playing the waiter who gets the bottle over, hit over his head from Joe Pesci, who was played by Judy Gold, which is hilarious. And uh, then, you know, I bought this bottle. It's a professional breakaway bottle. They're very expensive. How and much? We $60 a bottle. So then I, we broke it over his head. The crowd goes crazy. So then he texts me the next day and he says, hey, we got to do that again. Break bottles over my head in every show. It'll be funny. So I'm like, that is a good idea. So I bought four more bottles. Uh, you know, and I think the whole price is like 240 bucks. That's and four times the, 60. Yeah, well, I'm not good with math. And then, um, and then the next time we're doing, we're doing a reading of Love, actually, he doesn't want to get the bottle over his head. He said it hurt him too much. Who's using breakaway bottles? No one thinks that's no, funny, Your except Honor, for Dave Juskow. He also thinks it's funny to slip on a banana peel. Your Honor, that and that's not funny. the only thing he did to me. It's way worse. Than we have a video of the, vi of, of the bottle. It's not a big well, deal. It's, it's, it's made out of sugar. Speaking, honorable judge was speaking to me. What happened was, Your Honor, we did The Godfather, and I played Luca Bracci, of all people. And he had this psycho comic garret me like the real Luca to the floor and started pounding my head in. Well, that's part of the show. And the audience likes when they do stuff like that to him. No, but the bottle's another story, Your Honor, because that bottle, I swear to God, Your Honor, I swear to God, was switched. We I had, had a video of it. You week. can see how I easy it is. He, 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 he wasn't complaining that day. No. Do we no, have a video of this? He's like, like kind of sicko that would do that. Yeah. OK, you that can see explains it for yourself. a lot of things. Nothing. Let's it's look no at the video. Deal. What do you mean, don't be like that? Huh? What do you mean? What do you mean? Ah. <laughs> Not right at the moment, I, I would just like to add, Your Honor, yeah, that what? I happen to know that he needs the money because he spends his rent money on fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> and Spider-Man, I'm not kidding, Spider-Man dolls that he sleeps with, OK? I well, don't sleep with Rachel, them. It's a blanket. It's a Spider-Man blanket. It's no big deal. I use it when I want to get extra Just warm. Jessica tries to get laid by saying, hey, you want to come back? I'll make you a star. Come back to my place, and now you can play with this my Spider-Man so dolls. Yes, that's Your his Honor. favorite line. I don't understand why my character is being in a, a Judge, that is his favorite here. line to say, hey, baby, how about it? This is no, an outrage. Right Objection again. Your Honor, how dad is I want this all stricken from the record. Well, I clearly have heard all the evidence. You may not be surprised that I'm going to dismiss the suit. Yay! Just because I figured he was going to come in with a big yes. neck collar. He's such a I phony. So I can't believe you're going into you. this. And I'll explain <laughs> why. I'll explain why. Justice has been served, Your I'm Honor. I'm sorry. It's just bringing up this... a lot of stuff for me. <laughs> what? Yes. This is insane. Well, that's true. But the point is, did you hire him? Was there a contract? Uh, no, there was no contract. So he had no obligation to do any of the things you're suggesting. It would have been nice. It would have saved you some money. But he wasn't your employee. You chose to do an act. You bought some things that would be good for the act. 
That's on you. There's no legal requirement he has to even show up missing this event because of a heart attack. I am going to rule that that is a valid excuse. Thank you, Your Honor. Therefore, I dismiss the case. I really enjoyed your presentation. So I just want to thank you, and also thank you for your service. My husband's a firefighter oh, and happens to work alongside of him in this Brooklyn. This is so unfair. Oh, is that true? Why didn't you reveal that? It's because he's a professional, yes. unlike these two. Oh, no, stop it. I'm Everyone you, drive safely on the way home. Thank you, Your Honor. Oh, man. <laughs> I hope you're happy with this, man. Mark, so much fun to work. It's been forever. Get over here. The judge knew the correct decision to make with him, and he knows what an idiot, a conniver, and a fool he was. And I am happy justice has been served. He's a good Jew. Those two ganged up. They don't know what they're talking about. I'm surprised Mike wasn't wearing a huge neck collar, the phony that he is. I will never be friends with that moron again. Of course he's going to continue to ask me for jobs. It never ends. It's almost harassment. I might have to call the cops. Sometimes I bring him on the road with me because, you know, he does pick me up at my apartment and drops me right back off again, and he usually pays me an extra 50 bucks for letting me have him open. I think our relationship will just be the same going forward. It doesn't matter. He's an idiot, and that's the way it is. I like working with idiots. Thanks for watching. Now please approach the bench. The way I look at it, you have two options here. Option A, watch more Judge Jerry. Option B, watch more Jerry Springer. The choice is yours. Now get out of my courtroom. You have more clips to watch. And don't forget to subscribe.